Hi folks and welcome back. It's the 28th of December and uh, I was starting to get a bit of cabin fever stuck at home <laughs> so uh, I thought I'd come out for, a, for an overnight camp. I've come out on my bike this time just for a, a bit of a change and also because my knee still isn't quite right and I've cycled down a bit of the Icknield Way. The Icknield Way joins onto the Pedders Way and you may, you may have seen my video on the Pedders Way. I walked it earlier in the year and um, this joins onto the southern end and connects it to the Ridgeway. Um, and then that extends all the way to the south coast. So all three of those paths join together to make one continuous footpath which runs from the Wash and the North Sea all the way down to the south coast. I can't remember how many hundreds of miles it is, but it is a stonker. I've bought my Smoky Hut hot tent. You may have seen that in a previous video. And um, I bought that because in a moment of madness, I went and bought a new stove for it. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I'm dying to try it out.
all set up, fire lit, all comfortable, all good. So as well as bringing a tent and a wood stove so it's nice and cosy in here, I um, also decided to bring my chair. I've got headroom above me and um, you know I can sit by the fire <laughs> and it's a little bit like being at home really, <laughs> um, except obviously I'm not, you know, but um, yeah, it's good, it's comfortable. It's important to be comfortable, especially if you've been doing things, active things during the day, you know. I always think it's uh, really important to have somewhere comfortable to sit, so. And it all fitted in, it all fitted in those couple of bags on my, uh, on my bike, so um, all is good. So this is the stove I bought. I wanted a lighter weight uh, tent heater. I have one that I made out of a 50 caliber ammunition can and this is a similar size, but the difference is that this one is really super, super lightweight. This one is made by Seek Outside and uh, it's the smallest one they do, it's called the Cub and it really is very simple. Um, it comes apart, it, it, it packs down flat, you have you know, front and a back, two sides, a top and a bottom. It's got a simple sliding door, and then it's got a little slider on the bottom as a vent. So you can close the door right up and um, and adjust airflow with the, the little vent on the bottom there. It also has a damper in the flue, which is operated by this little key here. So you can open it up and you'll get a lot more draw, uh, or you can close it down and um, increase the length of your burn. So uh, yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, the reason I bought it is because this is just about the lightest one I could find. The stove weighs about a kilogram. <laughs> it's, you know, it is so light, it weighs nothing. My, my ammo can stove, just um, to put it into context, weighs about 10. So this is a 10th of the, of the weight. And because it packs down flat, I can, I can pack it away and take it with me backpacking or, you know, like I did today, it'll, it just all packs away into a little pouch and um, I can stick it in a bag and, and take it away on the bike. You know, you don't even notice it's there. The flue rolls up, so it's an interesting, an interesting idea. Um, it, you know, it rolls away and, and and just takes up about this much space as a tube. You know, when it's when it's packed away. I'm impressed on first on first use. I did obviously use it at home just to just to to burn it in, um, just with some twigs out on my patio. Um, but this is the first time actually using it in the tent, so it's good. It's kicking out a lot of heat. I've um, just put some water on to boil, just enough for a dehydrated meal that I'm going to have for my dinner tonight. And here's what I'm having. It's a double portion chicken fajita bowl, a mountain house one. These were sent to me um, by a really kind subscriber earlier in the year and I've been slowly working my way through them. I like the sound of this. I love fajita so um, yeah, should be good. It's got some rice and grilled chicken, roasted vegetables, black beans. Yum. It's me going on about being all ultra lightweight, but I still managed to squeeze in a couple of beers. I'm gonna have one of these while that water boils. I'll tell you what I like about these is you actually get decent chunks of food in it. Not like the old 
the old dehydrated meals, which were just all kind of like mush, really, and the flavours weren't very good. Obviously, technology has come a long way in how food is dehydrated, and now they can dehydrate bigger chunks. So you actually get decent pieces of chicken in there, and you know all the vegetables are kind of whole. <laughs> Hmm. I thought I'd give you a proper guided tour. So here's the tent. It's a one tigress black orca range smoky hut tent with a homemade stove jack just made out of a silicon baking sheet. And then the flue comes up through that. Flue is titanium, as is the stove. It's got my wood pile. And then inside, I've got a German army ground sheet. It's just a like a reinforced plastic, but really light and very cheap. I picked these up for about three pounds. You know, they're really, really cheap. And um, yeah, they're really good. I've got my sleeping bag, which is a Mountain Hardware Lamina 35. Goes down to just above zero, um, which will be fine tonight. I think temperature tonight is supposed to get down to about four degrees centigrade. Celsius, um, so that'll be fine. And as a pillow, I've got a Primaloft insulated jacket, which I can put on if I do get cold. And then under that, I've got a Thermarest NeoAir Xtherm mattress, super comfortable. Over at the back there, I've just got a, a storage area, and it's just a bit of a, an admin bomb at the moment. Just all my gear, basically, that I didn't want to leave outside. And then next to the stove, I've got my chair, my gloves, keeping warm in front of the stove and the stove doing what it does kicking out loads of heat right I'm gonna make a bannock I bought a mix with me um, not to have tonight but to have for breakfast tomorrow but I thought while the wood stove is hot I can make use of that and um, and cook it tonight and then it'll be ready to eat in the morning um, and that means I won't have to I won't have to light it again in the morning and then for coffee I've got some bacon as well I'm going to have in the morning with the bannock but I can cook that on my firebox stove which I bought with me um, just uh, using a meths burner so I'll, I'll just use that for coffee and bacon and I can have my bannock which is already cooked. The only slight problem I have is that my pan doesn't fit <laughs> it doesn't fit on the top of the stove because of these wing nuts here which hold the thing together um, the flat surface that you can use is, is too small for my pan but actually that's probably not a bad thing because it means it won't get too much heat and I can just keep rotating that as it cooks you know and that'll be fine so I've got my dry mix here um, and it's all just in a ziplock bag so that I can mix it all together in the bag you'll see you'll have seen me do this before it just saves it get, saves getting it all over your fingers um, at least initially. So in here I've got plain flour, I've got baking powder, I've got um, dried milk powder and I've got raisins and I just need to add a little bit of water to that. It's um, a good idea just to add a little bit at a time, mix it and then just keep adding more it's uh, very easy to add too much. Just mix it up in the bag. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. You want a fairly dry, dry mix, and then you can just tip it out onto something. I'm going to tip it into my plate here, and I'll carry on mixing it. And once you're happy that you've mixed it all, just flatten it out, pinch it, flatten it all out with your fingers. Get it nice and thin. There are loads of different recipes for bannock. Wherever you go, whoever you speak to, they always seem to have their own little twist on it. It's nice made with beer instead of water, but I didn't want to give up any of my beer.
even just rested on those nuts it was too hot so I've had to I've had to put a pebble underneath that corner there so that it's completely up off the top of the top of the stove it's just too hot you see there it's just browning lightly now you don't want it to burn cheers Ooh. That's nice. Bannock's done, so I'm just going to pop it in the bag that I mixed in. I've cleaned the worst of the dough out of it. I'm just going to slot that in there just to keep the slugs and insects and stuff off it. That'll go nicely with my bacon in the morning. I hope you all had a lovely Christmas. I certainly did. Um, really nice to you know spend some spend some family time. Uh, we had quite a few people around on Christmas Day, so a lot of people around the table. It was it was really nice. Uh, Maggie had a lovely day. She she had some nice treats, and uh, I cooked her a steak for for Christmas dinner, which, as I'm sure you could probably imagine, she enjoyed. And um, yeah, didn't really touch the sides to be honest, but um, yeah, that was good. I'm going to wish you Happy New Year now because this video probably won't come out until the New Year. Although I'm planning on doing a New Year's video, but that will follow this one, if that makes any sense. <laughs> yeah, it's only the 28th of um, December at the moment, but you know, by the time I've edited and um, my internet is ridiculously, ridiculously slow and it takes days to upload a video. So um, yeah, it won't, certainly won't be out before, before New Year. So happy New Year. It is so hot in this tent. I've had to unzip the door completely and take my fleece off. And now I'm gonna have a hot chocolate. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's tradition though. And that usually means one thing as well. It's bedtime. So I'm gonna drink this up and I will bid you a good night and I'll see you in the morning. Good night.
Mm. Morning, folks. I uh, slept pretty well for the first part of the night, but I got very cold in the early hours of the morning. Like I said yesterday, my, my sleeping bag's only a two-season sleeping bag. I've got a warmer one, but just um, for the sake of being light, <laughs> I thought I'd bring my two-season bag. I, I did check the forecast, and um, it was only supposed to get down to about four degrees last night. <clears throat> and I, I don't think it probably did drop much below that, to be honest. There's no frost. I have been out and had a little walk out of the woodland just, just to see what things are looking like. And there's no frost or anything. So, um, yeah, it probably didn't. It, that was probably fairly accurate. But I did get cold sort of, I don't know, four o'clock, five o'clock this morning. So I just put my warm coat on, snuggled down to my sleeping bag and did the hood right up and, and I was all right. I was fine then. So that was that was all good. It was lovely to drift off to sleep to the sound of nighttime wildlife, the deer and the owls. Absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to have my breakfast. I've got some bacon. Um, I'm going to attempt to fry that in my titanium plate um, over that meths burner. Now, I, from experience, I know that that isn't the best kind of combination, really, because you tend to get a bit of a hot spot um, right in the middle of the pan and, uh, and things burn. But I, I'm going to try and just cook this around the edges of the pan and see how it comes out. And I've also got my bannock that I cooked yesterday. So there we go, we've got my bacon, which didn't burn too badly considering. My bannock from last night, and then in here, I've got some squeezy honey. Time to pack up. Well, there we go, all packed away. Zero evidence of us ever having been here. I thought I'd just go through how I've packed everything away on the bike, how I managed to fit it all in, because <laughs> it amazed me. At the front, I've got three bags. There's a 20 litre dry bag at the back, which sits directly on my handlebar stem, so it's supported, and that's all strapped and bungeed on. Um, and in here, I've got most of my kit. The tent is in there, my chair is in there, my sleeping pad is in there, my ground sheet is in there, and my warm coat, which I used as a pillow. So that all fits into that 20 litre dry bag. This bag here contains the stove that just sits on the top and that's bungeed on. And then on the front here I've got a, a front bar bag, an outlet bar bag, and that's basically camera gear and loose bits and pieces that I didn't want to have to hunt for. So my torch is in there, um, my little firebox stove, fuel, bits and pieces like that, bits of food and stuff are in there as well. So that's everything at the front and my map just bungees on so I can see where I'm going. At the back of the bike I've got this seat pack. This is enormous and it's held in place with a bar which you clamp between the seat and the seat post. So that's there and this thing slides on and then, and then straps on. And um, this thing is enormous. I've got my sleeping bag in there. I've got my cup. I've got um, my saw, my knife. I've got my plate. Um, I've also got all my rubbish in here, but on the way in I kept those beers in there, so the beers sat right at the back there and they, that was fine. And um, obviously they've, they've gone, but the rubbish is there now. And then it's got like elasticated 
bungee cord on it as well so you can strap stuff to it. So I've got a little mini tripod which I strap onto there as well. And the big tripod that I'm using at the moment straps onto the front between the dry bag and the bag that the stove goes in. And then in the middle of the bike, I've got a camel back here um, which straps underneath that holds two liters of water. And then the poles for the tent are just strapped to that. And I've got a, another bottle here with whatever that holds, 750 mils or something or other. So that was all the water I brought and, I've, and I'm taking water out, there's plenty there. So yeah, all good. Right, well I'm off home. It's been a lovely night. It's been great to try out that stove in my tent. Uh, for such a small stove, that thing really does chuck out some heat. Um, heated that space up too well, really. <laughs> That's gonna be great when the temperature is actually cold. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.